Hello, good evening, and welcome to another draft with Service Cast. I'm Andy. We're doing some Dragons, Dragons, Fate drafting today. And straight away, we've opened an absolute bomb in Sidisi Undead Vizier. Um I can't see myself picking anything sort of different here. If I'm totally honest. Um, so quickly, what else is in the pack? Uh, Butcher's Glee is quite nice. Uh, the Cosby Heal is pretty cool too. Sarkin's Rage, but all in all. Um, there's not really a lot in this pack. I think by far and away the best thing for us we're picking up here is the Sidisi, so we're going to take that as our first pick. It's quite nice to actually be drafting today. Um, I've spent the day recording Modern Masters drafts. You'll find those on the website and on our YouTube channel as well. Just head to www.servicecast.com. And head into MTG or Magic and uh, then videos, and you'll find everything else on there as well. So let's kill the wastes of foil. Um, there's not a lot of black all in this pack. Um, I quite like the skill the waste plan. Um, if we can find something to sort of hold off the early game, we can then search it up with Sidisi. Uh, there's a stamina out code as well. Um, silk crop in the packs, quite nice. This is actually quite a decent pack. And you've got skill the waste silk wrap. Um, Summit Prowler, the Zephyr Scribe, there's uh, the Elk Code, it's quite a difficult choice, but I think I'm definitely going to be taking the uh, Secure the Waste here. Black White Warriors is an archetype that I really liked in uh, Carnes and Fate. It's a little bit more uh, challenging to pull it off in this, but there are some cards that mean that all your Warriors get first strike, things like that as well, which can make it quite a powerful card. Um, I've not really got any sort of interest in Dragon Lord's prerogative. We haven't got any dragons in the pool at the minute. White and black are really not very good here. Um, I'm not a fan of going into green either, but blue seems like to come this far around is quite open. Um, white, blue may be an option. I want to try and keep myself quite open at the minute. So we've got black, blue as an option, and white, blue as an option, uh, and black, white as well. So we'll take the prerogative here. The only other card really that I consider picking is a Tarka Freak, but I think that's a bit further away from where we want to be. Okay, Dragon Hunter is not a bad pickup. Um, the Light Walker is pretty good as well. So we've got a Sorcerer if we want to go down the Control Deck plan. Or we've got the Vulturous Even. Um, the Even would secure the Waste might be quite nice, it just gives us a chance to draw into some more stuff. I think here we're looking at like probably going black blue based on the sort of cards that are still in the pack and if that's the case then the uh, the Avon is probably the best card here for us so we'll go ahead and take it I'm still going to keep my eye open for skill away so I'm not locked into blue um, but we've got the start of a really nice sort of blue black control deck um, which could be quite quite good for us I don't normally play blue so it'll be interesting to give that a go as well um, I just find that I find it quite difficult to play the control game. I'd much rather be smashing people in the face, but we'll give it a go and see what happens. Okay, so this pack really doesn't have a lot of anything going on. Um, the best card in the pack at this point is probably the Sandcrafter Mage. Um, I do like the Lightning Berserker, but I think we've passed too much good red to sort of move on that at the minute. Zephyr Scribe's fine if we want to sort of look for some card draw, but I think it's a bit expensive for the ability. Um, Rock's fine if we want an evasive blocking flyer. Tygon Strike, I'm not that keen on taking this early either, so we'll take the Sandcrafter Mage and sort of see where we go. We may end up playing Esper if we can pick up relevant fixing. Okay, so loads of good blue cards again here, and um, the Utilized Breath of the Anticipator both good. Yeah, I think we're probably going, like, the Dragonloft Idol's okay as well, but I think Anticipate's going to give us a lot more uh, advantage going into the late game. If we're going to pick up sort of maybe one or two Evolving Wilds and a couple of decent jewels in pack three, um, 
we could probably end up playing the uh, playing the Esper game here. Again, I'm still not locked in on white. I mean, we've got the two white cards, but they're not anything to sort of hold us hold us in there. Okay, we don't really have any sort of face down creatures at the minute. Um, not interesting sort of aim tactician or glint. I think the best card here is Palace Familiar, um, especially with having the two exploit guys already. And this is a pretty solid pickup for us. And that's sort of pushing us much, much further into blue black now. Um, so I'm going to sideboard the white cards for now, but we may revisit them at a later date. Um, Shaman Goblin, again, another great target for us to be exploiting. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I'm going to be playing the tempo game, so the Utah Breath isn't that great for us. The Zephyr Scribe is not a bad pickup, but the Shaman Goblin just seems like the better pickup for us at this point in the draft. I'm looking to get sort of three or four good exploitable cards for every two or three cards with exploit, and that should give us a nice even balance. Okay, so not a whole lot of anything here. Um, the Contradict, if we're going to try and play the Control game, is fine. Um, the Shed Hide Dragon wouldn't be a bad pickup if we're doing up splashing the White as well. Um, a 4 4 Life Linker or even a 3 3 Life Linker for 6 is quite playable. Um, I'm not a fan of playing the Counter Spells at 5 mana. So I'm going to take the Shield Hide Dragon here and see if we can sort of maybe look at that Esper plan further down the line. Um, Skywise Teachings, if we're going to play the Blue, um, this is probably a pretty good way for us to go. Although I do like Student Urgitai as well. In fact, the Student Urgitai may just be better because it's got a bigger bum and it means we can get down to our late game. I'm going to take the Student. Again, Dragon's Ice Savant is fine um, if we do go down that Esper sort of route. Falton Shriek, not really anything to shout about. The two artifacts aren't that great either. So it looks like we may actually be looking at an Esper deck, so uh, the Light Walk has gone really late as well. Which is always going to be a good thing for us. Uh, we'll take a Tiger on Strike, but as I said, I'm not that excited to play it. Warning Tomb Shell, perfectly playable card. I know just Tyra or Selengar here would really sort of cement us into what we're trying to do. But who knows if we're going to be that lucky. Okay, Risen Executioner. Um, <clears throat> this seems fine. Just to sort of take a look, see if there's anything else in the pack. Um, not a fan of Spear Dragon. There is a Silumgar Butcher. Now, I think I think the Risen Executioner is something that I quite like to try. Um, we're also quite heavy at the top end of our curve already, so going into the uh, Silumgar Butcher isn't a bad thing, but I think uh, the Risen Execution might be better for the deck that we're trying to build. Henry's Trove is absolutely terrible, um, but this is a sort of tough call. So I've now got to make the decision if I want to sort of go into white, go into blue, what sort of way I want to go. Um, Pacifism is really powerful. We've got Hand of Silumgar as well. Nice black two drop with death touch. Um, and we've got the flatten. My problem with this is that we've seen a few twin bolts going around and that sort of kills things off. Um, we seem to be getting the exploit card, so the pacifism might not be a bad route for us to go here. Actually, I'm going to take that. Uh, Corpse Weft. This synergizes really well with the Risen Executioner. There's nothing else really in the pack that we're going to sort of look at taking. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the Corpse here and see if we can sort of make it work. So definitely locking in on the black plan. Um, it's just whether we want to go sort of blue or white with it. 
at the minute I'm kind of liking our white for the little bit of removal it's giving us in the uh, student merger side but there is a Sylvan Guard Scorn here as well Monastery Lord Master is also a great card and we've got Enduring Victory point a bit more uh, removal but yeah let's take the Enduring Victory so Dragon Tempest in the pack so nobody's sort of drafting heavy on that side of things um, we don't actually have any dragons, but Falcon and Vacation could still be good for us. Other than that, we've got sort of Center Soul, Fate Forgotten, nothing exciting. I'm going to take the Falcon and Vacation, I think, and uh, hope we can get into a dragon later on. We have got the Shield Hide Dragon, and at this point, I'm pretty much firmly into a black white deck. It always surprised me how quickly things can change when you're sort of building these pools through. Um, defeat solid removal at two, and um, you're almost always going to hit something with it. We've got quite a few creatures already, so I'm not too worried about sort of picking this up here. Um, other cards to note: there's another anticipate, um, which if we were sort of going the Esper route, would be perfect for us. And um, there's another Light Walker as well, but I think the removal was more important for us at this point in the draft. Um, Territory Rocks not a bad pickup. It's another nice little two drop. It can chip away in the air and then we have got it as a, a nice sort of 1-3 body as well. So if it does need to block it's not too bad at doing that in the first early turns of the game. It also blocks mortar really efficiently. Um, so I'm going to pick that up here. Wow, okay. Um, the white and black cards aren't all that exciting. But the Ujitized Command still being in the pack this late in the draft suggests that white blue is really open. Um, and I would be prepared to sort of splash this. We'll take the Ujitized Command and we'll look to splash it if we can pick up a couple of Jewel Lands in pack 3. Exactly what we're looking for. Pick up the Evolving Wilds here. So that's going to mean we can probably play at least a couple of these blue cards at this point. Um, Ancient Cops, okay, but not really excited to play it. Um, we'll pick up a Fate Forgotten for the sideboard just in case we are playing against the enchantment decks. So I really like the look of this deck so far. Um, if we can get a couple of lands, um, sort of blue, white, black, dual lands, we'll be uh, cooking on gas. We've got a nice finisher with Secure the Waste, we've got Shield Hide Dragon, a few different things we can sort of go for as well. Um, Zephyr Scribe, not a bad pickup for us here. He's got a little bit more card draw. If we are going to have the Esper route, and we managed to wheel the Sylvan Guard Scorn as well. We've just got a pile of really good cards at the minute. Um, I'm not entirely sure how they're going to come together. A lot's going to be determined by what happens in the next pack. Uh, we'll take the Ancient Carp and put it straight to the side, but it's not something I think I'm going to be playing at the minute. Okay, let's see what pack three has got in store for us. Quite looking forward to playing the uh, Courts of Timification. Ah, okay, we get a Dragon Scale General. Um, solid pickup for us. It's just a card that has to be dealt with. Um, it can also make our flyers bigger. Other cards to note um, the Team of Saber Tooth, if we're in green, would be great, but it's not. There's the Avon Survey as well, but that puts us. We're going to find the Door Blue difficult. I'm already looking at cutting the scorn and the prerogative. And um, the Jeskai Sage isn't too bad either, but I think we're definitely taking the general here. Okay, so we've got a Sand Steep Darkcast. Perfect. Almost exactly what I'm looking for for the deck. Um, there's a the Reach of Shadows as well. Quite a nice sort of removal on the Harsh Sustenance. There's another decent removal spell. But Sand Steep Darkcast is just so efficient. Um, it's not worth not taking it here. Wow, Flames Rider. Um, again, it's a great card, but not so I'm sort of to pick up. There is a Dismal Back, what we were looking for, but to get another Sand Steeped Outcast is just awesome for our deck here. Um, there's not many other solid sort of picks that I'd be going for, but Sand Steeped Outcast is definitely one that I want to pick as many as I can. Every one of these that I see, I'm pretty much going to be taking. I think the card's insane. I 
I don't mind splashing the blue for the Urge Tides command, but I think the other cards are not going to be worth sort of weakening our mana base for. Unless we can pick up some of the jewels later on. We might get lucky in uh, Wheel of Dismal Backwater, but I, uh, I very much doubt it. I'm always saying I'm wanting to play an 18 land deck here purely because of the secure the waste. If we can get to that sort of stage, um, then I want to have as many lands as possible before I cast it. And it may well be if we can pick up enough, enough other good playables and the Utah Tazman gets cut as well. We've certainly got a sideboard plan to move into the, uh, into the blue side of the deck as well, so got a few different options. Okay, so what have we got here? Um, not a whole lot to tell you the truth. Uh, we're probably going to take the Typhoid Rats. Just again, it's a good early sort of one drop that can just do do a lot of work. Um, just stops people attacking into us. If we were staying in the blue, then the Frost Walk is a great pick up. Um, but I think Typhoid Rats is definitely the pick for us here. Um, right when doing's not a bad card for us. Um, I quite like Will and the Naga as well, but again we're not we're not playing that tempo game. However, the Dell's quite relevant. There's nothing really in white and black, um, so it's just taking the best sort of card for our sideboard. Which if we do go into the blue, then right when doing's probably the uh, the better of the two cards for us. Sage's Reverie, well, how many sort of enchantments have we got that we can attach to things? Not a lot. However, the Sibsing Muck Draggers is awesome because we can just get back whatever threat we need from our graveyard, put it back to our hands, and do it all over again. So we're going to be taking that card here. Uh, cloud Form. This is really making me want to play the blue. Um, there's nothing in black or white here, so we're going to take the Cloud Form um, and we may sort of revisit that. So the question now is do we want another removal spell in Harsh Sustenance? We are going to be making quite a lot of guys. Um, or do we want to take the Sultai Emissary? I think the Harsh Sustenance is probably going to be better for our deck. Wow, we wield the Avon Surveyor. Um, that's quite impressive. Blue's been really open. But it looks like we're uh, we're not going to get back. Another Harsh, harsh Sustenance card that I really like playing. Um, we can bring our curve down quite a bit here. Arish and Cleric is fine for the sideboard. And we'll pick up that Frostwalker just in case we do decide to play the blue. We've we've got sort of three really good decks here now. Um, our blue is really strong as well. And we're not locked into any particular colour. We might have to build these decks a couple of different ways around and see what sort of looks good and what doesn't. Thinking that maybe the Corpse Swept for his Executioner might be a little bit brave. to make two cuts out of the deck. Um, Dragon's Eye Sentry. Th this is all just early game blockers. Okay, we've got the Will of the Naga back as well. Right, we've got a lot of really good blue cards. Blue's been so open. Okay. So we need to make sort of two cuts from the deck, and I'm not certain what they are, to be honest. <coughs> okay, so, let's take a look and see what we've got. The Wandering Tower Shell, I'm not overly keen to play. We're not looking for a massive late game. And for the same reason, the Dragon's Eye Sentry isn't that powerful either. Like, our removal is just bonkers. We've got, what, Enduring Victory, two Harsh Sustenances, uh, Defeat and Pacifism.
like the only morph that we've got is the uh, shield hide dragon but we've got a lot of ways to sort of get to the end game this is tough I mean I still think we want to make one more cut from the deck And the 4 3 for 4 is really powerful that we can just keep recurring it. Um, and Corks, it gives us a way to sort of really take advantage of that. I think maybe the last cut's the, uh, the Dragon's Eye Sentry. Yeah, let's make that cut there. Okay, so I'm quite quite happy with this um, we've got really good sort of we've got a really nice curve and exactly what we want to do um, we've only got the one delve spell and we've got ways to sort of interact with our graveyard um, secure the wastes I'm probably going to be looking to cast for sort of four or five around this sort of slot um, this all seems sort of quite powerful so we've got no double white cards we've only got the one double black so our mana base is going to be pretty even Looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 white, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13 black. Um, probably going to go a little bit heavier on the black. Run sort of a 9 8 split. Purely because we've got the double black pips but not the double white. So we'll give this a shot and we'll be back soon for uh, for round one.